Welcome. In this module, we're going to take a look at how to develop effective security policies. And there are six steps to security policy excellence. There's a very nice article, uh, which is uh, the URL is shown on the screen. And let's take a look at how to develop effective security policies because this is about documentation and documentation is very hard to develop. It requires a specific talent and a skill. And then people usually do not read documentation which is very voluminous or which is not very well written. So the purpose of policies and procedures is to establish guidelines to a behavior and business processes in accordance with an organization's strategic objectives. While typically developed in response to legal and regulatory requirements, their primary purpose should be to convey accumulated wisdom, experience on how best to get things done in a risk-free, efficient and compliant way. So these are policy pitfalls from the article that I just mentioned, which is very nice. Number one, poorly worded policies. Number two, badly structured policies. Number three, out of date policies. Number four, in an inadequately communicated policies. Number five, unenforced policies. Number six, lack of management scrutiny or lack of management review. Let's take a look at each one. So number one, create and review. So documents must be written using language that is appropriate for the target audience and should spell out the consequences of non-compliance. What will you do if you, what will happen if you don't follow it? Smaller, more manageable documents are easier for an organization to review and update because they're easy to manage while also being more palatable for the intended recipients, meaning they can digest it, they can understand it, and something they can understand, they can easily follow. So that was the, the first step of how to develop an effective security policy. Create very simple documents and review them. Step number two, distribute. Organizations need to effectively distribute policies, both new and updated in a timely and efficient manner, and make sure that they are accessible let's say on the, on the um, co company internet or portal. These need to be consistently enforced across an organization. So these need to be a check that is there being, is there enforcement being done? Number three, achieve consent. A process needs to be implemented that monitors users' response to policies. Policy distribution should be prioritized, ensuring that higher risk policies are signed off earlier by users and other low risk documents. And the best way to do this is to like a workflow application so that um, the approval and the review, this is being tracked in an automated manner rather than a manual process. So step number three, achieve consent. The further detail is systems need to be in place to grant a user two weeks to process a particular document after which the system should automatically force the user to process it. Number four, understanding. To monitor and measure staff comprehension and effectiveness of policies and associated documentation, organizations should test all or perhaps a sub subset of users. So there should be a, a system, a sequence, a mechanism so that policies are distributed. People can give, can give feedback on policies and that is all tracked and documented or there's, a, there's a, for example, a section where the different uh, feedback is recorded and a response can be given. Other than that, uh, there needs to be a mechanism to make sure that people have understood the policy. They have read it and that could be a testing mechanism, for example. Now, any areas that show weakness can be identified and corrected accordingly. Additional training or guidance may be necessary, or if it's the policy that is causing confusion, it can be reworded or simplified. Step number five, audit, auditability. The full revision history of all documents needs to be maintained, as well as who has read what, when, and if possible, how long it took, who declined the policy, and why, this record should be stored for future reference and may be stored in, conjun in conjunction with test results. Now, what you're seeing is that there's involvement being done here. It's not just a, a, a one-dimensional 
develop the policy in isolation and then expect the users to follow it. There's a, there's a whole sequence of, of actions and activities which are suggested here, which engages the, uh, the target audience. And you, there's a mechanism to give feedback. There's a mechanism to review. There's a mechanism to distribute. There's a mechanism to make changes. There's a mechanism to test and uh, train. And the audit auditability, of course. So the full revision history of all documents needs to be maintained, as well as who has read what, when, and if possible, how long it took, who declined a policy and why. This record should be stored for future reference and may be stored in conjunction with test results. So important to, to make sure and get into the detail of, of, of maintaining a very effective security policy. And the last step, reporting. To affect change and improve compliance, it helps if key performance indicators related to policy uptake are, is it actually being implemented or not, are clearly visible across all levels of an enterprise. And a dashboard visibility of policy uptake compliance by geographical or functional business units helps to consolidate information and highlights exceptions. So what you can do is that you can make a dashboard which is easily viewable, and then you can compare and contrast. You can create a heat map to show that what is the compliance level, what is the training level, um, what is the review status, and all of that can be done in the form of a reporting dashboard so that it's very, very visible to everybody how the policies, how effective the security policies are and what their status is. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.